Hello everyone, this is going to be a little bit different, kind of a follow-up video to something I uploaded last year titled Foreskin Restoration. Uh, most of you know that uh, aside from being a libertarian and being passionate about that, I have a couple other side issues that I'm pretty interested in. And circumcision and uh, foreskin is one of those issues. And uh, that video has proven to be very popular. It's one of the few videos that uh, continues to get a lot of uh, hits every day. I get a lot of messages about it. I get a lot of questions about it, personal messages, comments. Um, I don't think that that's uh, something that there's tons of people interested in, but the community that is, is pretty active and pretty inquisitive. And this is a follow-up video because one of the most common questions that I get asked on that video is, uh, how long does it take? And I wanted to answer that in a video because there seems to be a lot of people who are very curious about this. Pretty much anyone who becomes interested in the process of foreskin restoration asks themselves and wants to know how long is this going to take. And uh, there is a way to give a short answer. There is an estimate that you can give, but I think it's really important to have qualifications on that answer. Uh, and so rather than just tell them I want to have this video both for me to just forward them to and because it is such a common question. So um, the first thing is that it depends what you consider finished, right? If your end goal is to simply have slightly looser skin, then that doesn't take as long as if your end goal is to have uh, flaccid coverage. And that doesn't take as long if your goal is to have full erect coverage. And that doesn't take as long as if you want to have full erect coverage plus overhang, which is something that a lot of people want. Uh, each one of those goals requires additional skin. And skin equals time in terms of how long it takes to restore yourself. Um, there's also the function of how much skin. Okay, so if you need two more inches of skin to uh, attain uh, flaccid coverage and that's your goal then it's probably going to take you less time than somebody who has the same goal but needs to only grow one inch of skin to achieve that uh, and on and on and on how much skin do you have how much skin do you want how big is your glands how much coverage do you want um, i think that there are probably differences in the rate of mitosis i don't think that everyone in the world is going to have an equal um, rate of mitosis in their skin. In fact, it seems highly impossible to even imagine that everyone would, although they might be very, very, very similar. Um, and then an even bigger variable is how consistent are people. So if you go and you ask people who have restored, you will find that there are people who have taken 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, 7 years, and that's immediately discouraging for anyone who's interested in starting the process. What? I, I want this done now. I mean, when people make the decision to uh, restore their foreskins, it's because they've decided that they are missing something that's important enough to invest the energy um, and the effort to restore, in which case they think it's probably something that's fairly important. And if you think something's fairly important, you don't want it to take 20 years or 15 years or 10 years. You want it as soon as you can. And I think people are daunted because it's not something that you can have done right away. There's a chance that in the future this will change. Uh, medical technology is always increasing. And with gene therapies and work with stem cells and uh, grafting and other things, it, it's plausible that in the near future or the medium term future, processes could be developed that are good. Currently, getting plastic surgery or having just have it done uh, by the best grafting techniques that we have today is a markedly inferior uh, restoration than you can achieve on your own. Uh, and so I don't recommend that people do that. Uh, it costs much more and it's much riskier to go that way. Um, obviously, though, if you do, then your restoration only takes as long as that process, which presumably is relatively short. If you want to restore on your own by applying a gentle tension over time, then it's going to take much longer. Um, so how long? Well, the biggest variable, like I said, is how consistent people are. It's very common for people to start the process and then become discouraged and either stop or become extremely inconsistent. And this happened with me. I became aware of uh, foreskin restoration in late 2012. And by mid 2013, I made the decision to start restoring. 
I bought some some equipment I started doing some manual methods and I started using them and after just a few months uh, definitely I mean within a month or two I got discouraged with my results I got discouraged with how difficult it was to use the device that I had bought and within six months I basically completely I went from trying to do it every day to just trying to do it periodically to just giving up completely and then from 2013 until 2015 I didn't do any restoration at all never once never tried the stuff I had the equipment I still had it I just didn't use it anymore and that is a very typical uh, circumstance that people find themselves in they get started and they're frustrated either the stuff that they have doesn't work or it's too much of a ha hassle or they fail to make it a habitual part of their daily routine and or something happens you have surgery you get a car accident you get a new job you get a new relationship you get married you get divorced you do this you do that and it becomes difficult for restoration to be effective it needs to be part of a daily routine or near daily routine it's not vital that you necessarily do every single day but if you're not doing it regularly it's the progress is going to be extremely sporadic and extremely slow it's a cumulative process right and many people have difficulty fitting that into their lives now once you do I think based on the people that I've talked to and the results that I've seen and the results that I've seen other people have there is a variance here like I said because you know how big is your dick how much skin do you have how tight were you cut how uh, were you cut evenly were you not cut evenly how big is your head do you want you know what's your end goal I've seen at the fastest documented evidence of people doing it in a year all right there's a guy who runs a website that makes one of the tools and I would be skeptical if he was merely claiming that he'd done this but he's posted you know dated photographs uh, you know I think like week by week or even day by day uh, showing his progress and you know uh, uh, leaving out the possibility that it's Photoshop and this guy is apparently legitimately restored at this point so it seems unlikely he apparently did it in a year also um, I think his name is Wilcox but one of the men who kind of popularized it in modern times foreskin restoration has an ancient history going back thousands of years but the uh, one of the men who popularized it recently a guy who recently died uh, he did it and he said it took about a year and so those are the two known cases uh, that I I've seen and you know in the one he has documentation and the other he doesn't have documentation but I tend to trust him it seems like it is possible um, but I would say that's an extreme outlier no one else that I've ever talked to was dealing with times that quick um, one year is time to make progress I've made progress you know one year I made a lot of progress I've seen people make a lot of progress but most people don't make enough progress in one year to be finished based on their own um, definition of what they want to be done with um, so that's quite rare um, I'd say most people if you are very consistent if you don't take you know months off or weeks off but if you do every day or there are, and there's something to be said for taking rest days right but if you are if you incorporate it into your daily routine and make it a habit and it becomes part of your lifestyle I think that it's reasonable to assume that you could get very close or be potentially be done in about four years and that's what I've seen a lot of people who uh, have gotten to the point where they have at least full flaccid coverage and that's maybe a good addendum here if you're talking about full flaccid coverage for most people I think four years of consistent effort is reasonable now it's true you might do it and not quite get that far maybe you have a little bit exposed or a little bit overexposed but I think that's a good estimate if you want more obviously you can add on to that they have done surveys of guys who have restored themselves so a relatively small chunk and the number that they kind of um, lean towards is seven years however I don't know what percentage of you know those guys what did they consider fully restored there's a tendency for guys who were circumcised and who decide that circumcision is bad and that foreskin is good to and I don't want to say over emphasis emphasize this but to have put place a value on foreskin that allow makes them have ends in mind that maybe most people wouldn't have so most people are not thinking I need to have overhang 
when I'm erect. I, when I have an erection, I don't need to have an inch of skin hanging past. That's something that naturally happens. It's perfectly normal. Uh, it's on the outside of what naturally happens, but it does. I've, and there's people who restore who sometimes get it in their head, and I'm not saying this in a bad way necessarily, but that's what they want. I mean, there's someone in one of the forums that I'm on who, as a joke, posts almost all the time, you can only have too much foreskin when you're tripping over it in the shower. Okay, that's hyperbolic, but there's something in that mentality that I think that's an exaggeration of an actual perspective people have. And I wonder, the guys who have fully restored and say it takes seven years, is that because they want that overhang? Because if you only want flaccid coverage, it's going to take a lot less. You know, for some people, Full flaccid coverage could only require you to grow like an inch or even some large fraction of an inch. Whereas for full erect overhang, I mean overhang, there isn't an immediate bounding on that, but that could easily add four or five, you know, quintuple, quadruple the amount of skin that you would need. And assuming a linear rate of skin growth, and this is something that is debatable, but it would be roughly linear, even if it's not perfectly linear, you know, three or four times or five times more skin is going to take three or four or five times more time. Um, so I think seven years is an outside if you want full complete. All right. And four years is a good inside for most people. I think that obviously if some people can do it in a year, there's some people who can do it in two years or a year and a half. I think that that's very rare. Um, none of the people I've actually talked to on the forums had times that quick, but there are plenty of people who you can see make progress in a one year or two year span. I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in others. Uh, there's a guy who lives about 40 miles from me who uh, is restoring and I don't know him very well. We've never met. We don't talk that frequently. I talked to him two years ago and he was about halfway done. Uh, so he had like partial coverage. His head was about half covered. Uh, and by the way, at that point, you are mistaken for uncut by most people. If you're at the gym, if you're in the locker room, even if you're meeting someone to hook up, you will get mistaken for uncut. And I've already reached that stage where that commonly, commonly happens. People will just say, oh, you're uncut, you know, uh, without any prompting from me or anything like that. Um, after two years, I saw him again. We started talking and he now has full coverage. So we went from half coverage to full coverage in about two years. So I think the four year time is, is a, and his coverage look, he looks uncut. He showed me pictures erect. He showed me pictures soft. If I didn't know that he was a restorer, even with my eye, you know, that is somewhat clinical in this respect, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell unless I had gotten really up close uh, and examined him, which I didn't do. Um, but it, it was good because he's he's consistent. No one's perfectly consistent, and there's debate about what exactly is the best regimen. So for people who see this video and ask, what's the best regimen? I'll probably make another video about that because that's a whole other question. Basically, I don't know the answer because there's been no empirical studies of this. It's all anecdotal, and it's terribly frustrating because you have people who will use one method and say that it works great, and other people who will use that same method and say it doesn't work at all. And for every method that people use, there's a cluster of people both swearing by it and denying its effect, efficacy. And that leaves somebody who's trying to decide in quite a difficult position, at least in terms of a definitive initial answer. Um, although, you know, what, so what I tell people is look into each of them, try them all, and whichever ones feel best to you, stick with those. Stick with them for several months, at least six months or a year. If you like your progress, stay with it. If you don't, try a different method. There. I probably don't have to make a whole video for that now because I just did. So that's that's my answer. It varies for everyone. I think if you're consistent, then you can be looking at four years is reasonable. It could be less for some people. Uh, up to seven years if your goal is for something more extensive like full erect coverage or overhang after full after erect, erect overhang. Um, or if you are... are uh, are not con uh, consistent. So like my rate could be, do I, do I count my restoration from 2013 or from 2015? See, I've been consistent since 2015. I was not consistent in 2013. I didn't tug at all in 2014. And it's very hard to say how much, if any progress was made in that first little bit, but you know, how, how I count when I started would make a radical difference. 
But mm -hmm. let's say I counted from 2013. It takes me two more years from now. Then that would have that would put 2019. So that would have been uh, six years. But two of those years were spent doing basically nothing. And even within the time now, I've been very consistent, but not 100% consistent. When I go on vacation or when I'm gone for a week or for work or whatever, it has not been perfectly consistent. And I've switched methods in there too. So yeah, four years to seven years, I'd say, is a good estimate. If you're consistent, uh, seven on the outside, four is a good average. And then if you're very consistent or you just hit the perfect method or you are just in the right circumstances, potentially less. Anyway, I hope that helps anyone. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments. I will use this video to post to people who ask um, on my previous one since that video seems to be getting a lot of traffic. And I will talk to you all another day. Bye-bye.